Uh, call the order the Capital Improvement Committee meeting of March 7th at 10.04 a.m. Obviously, we're here to review the capital requests from different departments. Today, we're going to hear from the building department first. Matt, uh, Ken, would you like to join us? Hi, Ken Frazier, building inspector. Okay. He'll be up checking out that illegal chicken shed. Maybe. I know. <laughs> no, it's far. <laughs> Can't do it. Nice. All right, the first request they put in for was a vehicle for the building department uh, to try and get the expenses down on our mileage, get the liability more away from the town for personal vehicles being used for town business. Uh, my sedan doesn't like going over these roads too much, no going up into these construction sites. So we need to get something in there for inspections. I uh, don't know if you get the pictures that I sent or what it was. It's an electric vehicle, electric pickup. Um, Ford Lightning. Yeah, I haven't seen them on SharePoint. So just so you know, Ken, um, Ellie and Surely, on on SharePoint because they don't have a government oh. email, so um, we'll have to get something for them. So they. You, I can get contact to them if they would like or something like that. What's you, that? Need, you need his printed? No, don't. I wish mine. Okay. <laughs> okay. I yeah, one one mine. copy it's for Shirley. Mine, so yeah. I don't want one. Um, do you have you gotten any prices? Yeah. So the price that I got was uh, I put in for the uh, capital for fifty thousand to cover any expenses that might be taxes, um, tax. labeling. Why taxes? It says. Well, I don't know if there's any taxes, taxes or any taxes for getting the vehicles in or anything. just to cover anything that might happen that we might need it for. Also, for getting it, uh, getting the symbol, the emblem put on it. Town emblem on the side of it. Just to help you out, the uh, suggested price on that was forty thousand. Is that what it was? Suggested price on that was forty-two thousand. Yeah. So there's a potential of ten thousand dollars in rebate money yeah. for it from both state and federal. Being an electric vehicle. Also, the town has the charging stations out there. Yeah. So I believe that we need to utilize them or they get charged on them. I'm not sure how that works. We might have better information on that. What's that? The charging stations. The charging station. Well, there's a fee associated with it. So I'm sure that um, we're the one that's paying the electric bill. So if it was for the municipal vehicle, I would assume that uh, we would absorb the cost. But the... <coughs> So you you estimated fifty thousand dollars because you don't know what the market's going to be when we get to it. Um, everything's fluctuating so much, um, like everything else that we do here. I, I'm always a, a proponent of trying to be a little higher than what it is to make sure that the projects will go through. The worst thing that can happen is you get it approved and then you're a thousand dollars short and trying to figure out how to do it. Right. It happens quite a bit, so I, I was trying to help Ken and answer Heldy's concern at the same time. Okay. Any questions on the pickup truck, uh, Shirley? Um, not at this time. It's for this year. Yeah, trying to give you this for this coming year, 2023. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There any questions for him, Ellie? That was it. Yep. Okay. No there. questions. Ken. No, I just know he needs a vehicle. That's yep. All. Yep. <laughs> um, would it be a shared use? Uh, well, it could be a shared use if it's sit sitting there. Then definitely other, you know, people in the department or community development could use it. it it would be out there so it wouldn't yeah. be anything and, uh, and these are questions that are going to come up so that's yep. why i'm asking you the question yeah it answer. could be shared it's, it's yep. you know fortunately i'm not out every day all day doing inspections but as we get bigger and bigger and we're getting into bigger sites we're getting into bigger construction sites 
Personal vehicles are just not going to make it going through the terrain that you get subject to. Yep. Brandon, do you have any questions for him? I do not, sir. Sorry, I forgot you were up there again. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, is this the first year out for the electric pickup trucks? Yeah, first year out for Do they make a hybrid model? No, I'm only asking, I'm just kidding. I didn't check into a hybrid, uh, considering that we had the charging stations mm -hmm. out there and with the rebates that were available and stuff. And yep. I know you get into the whole criterion for if you're adding expenses through fossil fuels to the town and everything, that all that paperwork goes back and forth. So I just tried to stay with an all-electric vehicle that would fit into the new guidances that are coming yeah. out every day. Yeah. On the rebates that you're uh, referring to, is that through the green communities? It didn't really say, it just said maybe eligible up to oh, all right. so on the $7,500 so. $7, $7, federally and $2,500 state. Yeah. So if you check with the green communities, if, it, if you haven't looked in, if that's not part of that. Um, looked at it before and through building and facilities I, I remember seeing a notation there I think it was up to seventy five hundred dollars for a an electric vehicle so it may help you I will definitely uh, check into that Let's see if I can find something on it anybody have anything else on his pickup truck no nope. you have anything else on your list I have another capital request for uh, doing some web storage and archiving for all of the documentation that's on the second floor of the building between building department, planning, zoning, uh, all departments within the town. It's getting to a point where the burden of paper upstairs, if something should happen, it's all gonna be lost. So I'd like to get an archiving program going, whereas I could utilize senior work off to, we would need to get a, a scanner for plans and a scanner for documentation, scan everything into it, enter it into the cloud storage space which the town already has an abundance of space available to them. Take any of the documentation that no longer needs to be saved and dispose of it and keep whatever needs to be saved there. I'm thinking that we could possibly reduce the paper upstairs by as much as 50%. Do we have a large format scanner now? I have a planner, a plotter scanner downstairs it's not uh, quick enough by any stretch of the imagination to have somebody trying to do that. Plus, we utilize it all the time with CDC and, and building department downstairs. What I was looking at is a, just purely a scanner only, not a, not a plotter scanner. And it's a higher speed scanner. Again, I got that uh, the one printed out here. Um, you know, it scans up to uh, 15 inches per second in black and white. So that's a pretty quick scanner for a plan scanner. Four yeah, this is the, the 48 inch. So you can take a full size set of C drawings or D drawings and send them through. So once you do that, you don't need this, the plotter anymore. And I'm only saying that because this is going to lead into what my question is. Have you reached out to any services that would that would potentially do that for you? No, I, I haven't reached out to any yeah, services. because. I'm, I'm not looking at just the building department. I'm looking at all departments within the town to get, you know, to utilize whatever is needed between the, the regular flatbed scanner and the, and the plan scanner. I mean, you've got uh, zoning and planning that got multiple pages of documentation that would need to be scanned. This is a project that would probably take, I'm going to guesstimate, three to five years to complete it with the amount of paperwork that needs to be scanned and documented. Yes, Ellie. Uh, have you talked to Rebecca Lavalle at the library, who's the archivist at the library? And she has quite a bit of experience in getting stuff scanned. And it might be nice to coordinate uh, whatever you do with what she does, because she she has that background as an archivist. Well, I didn't know. I would definitely, you know, appreciate any information from anybody with regards to people that have that ability and, you know, that background knowledge of archivism and all that to, to get the program off the ground and get it up and running so that we have it in a viable situation where anybody who needs to get a document can go in and just put a couple of keys and there's the address and there's everything to the address that's happened over the life of the address. 
right now that can be in multiple locations, it can be in multiple rooms. For another day, no stop. Um, do you have anything for him, Shirley? I'm just thinking, you know, um, maybe including the town clerk and all the departments. Yeah, that's what he was saying. That yeah, uh, yeah it would be all the departments within the town that would have documentation that would need to be uh, archived. And do you have any uh, estimates for equipment that you? The estimate I had for the equipment that it was for the uh, plant scanner and for a flatbed scanner, we were looking at about eighty-five hundred dollars. The equipment's the easy part. The coordination is going to be the trouble right. part, and because yeah, you're going to, you're going to, it's going to be a little bit further than just having seen your work off. Right. Yeah, you're going to need somebody that really knows exactly. Otherwise, that. you're going to just be scanning everything. You're going to have a ton of stuff scanned. Well, I mean, uh, utilizing the senior work off, I think, could work very well. We've got two senior work offs in, that have been uh, sorting and, and, and arranging all of our building department plans and, and files and everything upstairs, and they've done a, a spectacular job. Mm -hmm. So once everything's arranged so that they can just get it and download it in, and then the clerk would have to let us know what documentation would need to be saved, what wouldn't need to be saved, and then we can have, uh, you know, recycled resources out the door, and whatever files we need to save, we can have them saved. And sure, there would also be some historical documentation that regardless of whether you scanned them and didn't need them or not, I'm sure the town would want to keep. Brandon, you have anything for Ken? I do not. Nothing, Ken. Nothing for me. I guess you're, unless you have something else. You no, know, that's go. all I have. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan. How are we doing? Just for the minute, take a hear that you'll be here for the water and sewer. Yeah. What's that? Thank you. So it's more or less just the summary sheet. That's just a couple attached. To, uh, Was there something on SharePoint too? Or not? Uh, not yet. Thank you. Pass one out, Mike. Thanks. Thank you. So I'm new to your format. Your new format. <laughs> So I apologize for not having, having the SharePoint documents up yet. But <clears throat> so I basically just did the summary sheet for now, um, just to at least get you guys up to speed on projects that we have going on and potentially. So where do you want to start? You might as well start with your uh, fiscal year 23. You have three items on that. All right, so the first one is a uh, valve exercise and maintenance trailer. Um, there's attached documentation there that kind of explains what it is, what it does. <clears throat> so we've got some... If you want to just briefly go through it, I've watched a bunch of your, your meetings with the water and sewers, and uh, I fully understand what it is, but they may want to know what this exercise... Yeah, so the valve exercise and trailer, um, you know, all the, all the water mains and everything in town, we got valves all over the place to shut them down, to shut down different streets. Uh, part of the reason you, you want valves is so that if you have a water main break or an issue, you can shut down smaller sections, so um, you often have more valves. So a valve, like a valve on Main Street, it takes 50 turns to shut that valve down. So <clears throat> technically by standard practice, we're supposed to exercise valves every three years to make sure they work. You exercise them up and down so they don't they're not, they don't get tuberculated and they'll work when you need them to work. Um, so what we, our plan is to exercise one third every year so that we just kind of have a standard every year and by the third year you're back at the beginning. Um, but with lack of staff and the amount of work it takes to turn all the valves in town, so there's every single fire hydrant has a valve, 
and then all the main line valves and every every road that comes off of a main has valves um, so we have several hundred valves to turn and like I said ones on Main Street are are 50 turns 48 to 50 turns to get it to shut down and I don't know, if, you, traffic. I don't know if you've ever tried to turn a valve <laughs> but um, last time I was doing one on Main Street I had a truck parked in front of me truck behind me and I'm turning and I still got whacked in the arm by a mirror going by <coughs> so you know it's, it's not the safest thing to be doing out in traffic um, this machine would would exercise mechanically does it so that someone's not standing there trying to turn uh, each valve by hand but it also measures the torque it counts the turns to make sure you're getting full operation measures how much torque it takes to turn it um, so that you're you can determine if it needs to be exercised more often because it's starting to get tuberculated or something um, <clears throat> so it would just help maintain the system. We have a few broken valves in town uh, that we have to dig up and fix at some point when we have some time. Um, but with a lot of the a lot of the water main projects that we have going on, you know, we'd, we'd prefer to maintain them so that we're not digging up roads after we pave them and prepare all this stuff to make sure we get the longest life out of the valves that we can. Any other questions on that? Anybody have any questions on his valve, Brandon? So this equipment also, it, it has a GIS thing on it and it measures and you can download right into the GIS programs. We have a GIS program uh, at the Water Sewer Department that we could, this would locate exactly where it is and it would, we could send that directly to the GIS program and it would also send the information so we can go out and click on it and see exactly which valves, you know, need, need additional work or it would, we put notes in it from the trailer. Um, so we know we need to do some work on it or not. All right, I'll start um, that one. Yep. So it's this piece of equipment is made by Kubota? Yeah. Nope, that's uh, that's FY24. No, go to the 23 to very yeah, top Yeah, skip that, that first page to so go to the next one. That's okay. Got the it. rest of those papers are that, okay. that trailer. <clears throat> are these, or can we talk? I ask a question. You can ask any question well, you want. I Ellie. know, but I always. We're, know we're here for you. <laughs> I, Go ahead. My protocol is wrong. Um, these are coming from the capital um, list, or is it coming from because it's? I always think of water sewer as being the users paying for stuff. So is it right. from them paying for it all? Um, the exercise and trailer would be the water sewer department paying for it. Um, I come to Capitol because we're part of the town anyway and we like to keep everyone informed as to the, the projects that we're doing, uh, especially when they involve, you know, large sums of money. Um, but the, uh, we, we don't always tell you which one, whether, and you know, as, as I've said at all the Capitol meetings in the past, depending on the project, it's a conversation that we have to have whether or not it's a split between the town and the and the department. Uh, but that would be strictly water sewer funds. Just out of curiosity, Bob, it shows it on a truck mount, you're gonna put it on a trailer? Trailer mount. Yeah. You have a place to stuff that thing. Yeah. Anything for uh, Bob on this trailer? You guys good? Yep. Yeah. Uh, next is the sewer asset management plan. Um, this is essentially the same thing that I've had on the list in the past about a, a sewer uh, master plan, um, similar to what we have for the water, uh, but we're calling it a sewer asset management plan this time because we applied for a grant through MassDEP and the SRF program. Um, so the, the project's about $126,500. Uh, we received a $75,900 grant, and then the additional $50,600 will be split uh, between the water department and then in-kind services. So $25,300 will be um, labor and stuff that we claim that we put effort into doing the work. So, so overall, we'll get a $126,500 project that we've been basically trying to get for the last 10 years or so that I've been coming to Capitol <coughs> for 25,300 now, so. So from Capitol, you're looking for the 25,300? 
Uh, again, that'll be out of the water sewer. Okay. So this is so. basically just bringing us up to speed, give us some of these an update are, as to what, what's going on. And yeah, some going. of these are informative. Some of these are, yep. um, you know, work that's going to need to be done that some of it's doing extensions or, you know, water mains that, you know, the, the department may be requesting split between the town. Yep. Um, but again, that would be a conversation we have to have as to determine percentages. So yeah, that that's another one that will be out of the water sewer department funds. That's the 25. So to, we we have to get it approved at town meeting for the full amount of 126.5. Um, but then 75,900 would be covered by the state, and 25,300 would be covered by labor in the water sewer department, as well as some other uh, key employees in town, and 25,300 out of the sewer budget. Bob, you mentioned the state revolving fund. Yes. Is that something that is used much? Um, well, to be honest, I don't like using it, <laughs> except when they're giving us a lot of money for free. Because um, if it's not for the, if it's not for the free money, then SRF is really a pain. They make you jump through a lot of hoops. There's a lot of meetings, a lot of requirements. You have to meet a lot of. Uh, state requirements that you typically don't need to do if we just did it straight on our own. So I typically shy away from it. The the appealing part of it before was always a low interest loan, so they're typically a 2% loan. Um, but with the rates today, we can almost get that ourselves and not have to jump through, all, jump through all the hoops. And SRF, because all the hoops they make you jump through, typically drives the price up a little more. So what you save in interest, you're spending in additional hoops that you have to jump through. Is there much outstanding that we owe the state through the state revolving? No, we don't have any. We don't have anything through the state revolving fund right now. This is through the SRF, um, but it's it's not a loan. This is where they're giving us a grant for the 75, so we don't have to repay that. So they do grants and loans. Correct. So that's. Typically, the only time I try to go through SRF is when I see the ability to get a, a grant through it. And a lot of times when they offer big grants, it's always through the SRF program. So if you didn't apply and have a project through SRF, when they come out with these grants, a lot of the like infrastructure stuff, when they start saying, oh, we're going to fund, like if you did a, a PFAS, I don't know if you've heard of PFAS yet, but it's been all over the news. So if we had... I have not heard of it. Okay, yeah. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a name about that long, and, and it's chemicals that oh, were it's in. the chemical, right. Yeah. I have heard of it, yeah. So uh, if we had triggered on that to have to put in a treatment plant, then there was a lot of grants that they were given through that. They were in the form of principal forgiveness on an SRF loan. So you take out a $10 million loan on SRF, and then they have like 19.8% principal forgiveness, so you'd save almost $2 million. So that's how they distribute a lot of those funds. Um, so like I said, without the principal forgiveness, I wouldn't go for an SRF just because they're a pain. A lot more work and a lot more, it's a lot more time consuming for all the employees in the town. Um, and I'm sure Matt wouldn't appreciate the loan process either. So. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, is that a tool in our toolbox? State revolving fund, or is it stay away more? Of course or less? it is, but after going through the EDA grant process, I don't want another federal or federally funded state. And EDA is easy compared compared to the SRF. Yeah. I just <laughs> so they do make it difficult. They make you work to get the money. <laughs> but like I said, unless I saw principal forgiveness and opportunities for that, then I typically wouldn't go for the SRF. Thank you. Anybody have any questions on the asset management plan? Ken? Shirley? Allie? Brandon? I do not. Uh, so then we got the <coughs> Main Street water main replacement from Franklin Street to Camp Meeting on South West Main. Um, and then the section of Northwest Main and Church Street. So that is something that we had a we had applied to SRF4. We fell just under the line, so <clears throat> we're not listed on that uh, through the state revolving fund. Uh, it's still a project that needs to be done. I know me and Kent have had this conversation a few times. Um, so this water main is 
It's it's an old from like 1950. It's a cast iron line. We've had probably 12 breaks on it so far, um, but it's kind of the main artery through the whole town. Uh, if if we have a big enough break on that line, we could easily drain both tanks in town. The entire town would be without water. So. It's about 70 years old. The typical age or typical lifespan of cast iron pipe was 60 to 80 years old. So we're kind of beyond the low end and in the middle. Um, only another 10 years or so left before they consider it its useful life expense. <clears throat> so it's a project that I think really needs to move forward. I think we had a few water main projects on there in the past times I've come to Capital Committee. and. The last two times that I came before the committee, I, uh, I had said that that was one of my higher priority mains. Um, we did a risk and resiliency study in the water and sewer department, and um, this was identified as one of the larger risks for the water department itself. So it would increase fire, pl fire flows, it would increase uh, reliability, <coughs> redundancy. So, How would that be funded? Uh, like I said, that was originally we had applied for the SRF, but we yeah. fell just under that. Um, so we would have to procure a loan. Um, my commissioners feel that it should be split between the town and the and the department based on it provides fire protection for the entire town. Uh, but again, that's one of those where we need to. We probably have to have another meeting to sit down and discuss the the funding and and what the best options are. So we did have another option for this plan. I haven't broken them down, but as Matt can attest to, uh, we have we have plans and kind of a, a goal, and then it gets changed 14 times in the middle of the project as to mm -hmm. to what the plans are. So <clears throat> I had discussed this with Matt the other day. Um, you know, this this was replacing the water main from Franklin Street, where we had the existing new 16-inch main right. put in. So that's yep. a new duct iron line, uh, much less likely to break. Uh, better fire flows, everything else. So from Franklin Street, this one here, the way I wrote it was from Franklin Street all the way to Northeast Main, where from that section of Northeast Main down was replaced a few years back uh, with duct iron. So that's a, a better pipe. So that would kind of fix that main line. And then there's a section from Main Street up Church Street and then loops back around North Street. We didn't finish that loop. We did do a section of Northeast Main to get us closer to finishing that loop, but we haven't finished that yet. This would finish that, but um, in discussions with Matt, we were looking at potentially scaling this back a little and only go up to either like the highway department or the uh, town common or something like that, scale the project back a little bit and potentially add sewer because we do on the, the mobile pipeline property now, which is the ideal spot for a, a sewer lift station. Um, and if we extended sewer up to the highway department or in that area, uh, we'd pick up the new building that they're planning for the family convenience center, uh, potentially the fire department, the highway department. Um, and I know that in the past there's been discussions of the safety complex or right. whatever they're referring to it at this point. <coughs> so. Um, that may be a better option at this point yep. uh, if you're pursuing a new highway department. Right. Instead of trying to design a septic system there for that size building and tying everything together. Yep. Um, you know, based on the, the prices that we came up with in the project that we're in the middle of now over on Gilboa Street, uh, adding a pump station would be much smaller than the one that we're specking for that area because we wouldn't yep. have as much flow potential from coming from that end of town. But. Uh, so we could go with a, a little bit smaller, but you'd still probably be in the $300,000, $350,000 range for a pump station. And then sewer extending up there would be gravity from the town, or from the highway department down to mobile, and then a force main going up to just about yeah. where the GBI modulars are. I have a question for Matt. Maybe you can help me with this. Or it might be a gene question. I don't know which. Um, I'm used to or accustomed to a lump sum value for our capital and this if this is a loan that's going to be split 50 50 between potentially between the uh, enterprise fund and the, and the town that would go over multiple years correct so how would we come up with a number that's 
that we're going to put in the capital and then moving forward, can we dictate what's going to go in the coming years for that capital? Can we earmark money like that? I'd probably look at a special article for this and look at the borrowing costs and whether or not it's included in the debt, you know, inside or outside the debt limit. So you could do a debt exclusion and then you'd be raising it on top of the tax rate versus inside the debt limit. So there's more conversation that needs to be, as Bob alluded to, you know, right. sometimes we split those things. The last project that we have, we split 75, 25, 75% 75 was on the levy, 25 was on the rate users. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the merits of the project and what that split's going to be. But if it's definitely something we're going to do a debt exclusion for, it's going to be its own article. Yeah, it's just a challenge that we have as a committee. We're trying to come up with our recommendations <clears throat> by the end of this month now. Um, and we need to know how, what value that has to use it towards what we have earmarked on our capital projects. I don't know that that's a 23. I think, I think more planning has to happen for that one. You agree with that? So this originally went on the 23 because we applied for the SRF loan. And we would have to have, in order to be eligible for the SRF, we have to have it approved at town meeting uh, this May. Um, we fell just under on the list. So this happened to us one time before uh, when we were doing the water booster station on Main Street. And they came to us in October after we, they said we, we didn't make the list. And then in October they said, oh, some of the people didn't move forward with this. So now you made it. And we're like, oh, OK, so what do we do? And they're like, OK, so you need our, your town, town meeting approval. And I'm like, oh, well, we didn't approve it because we weren't approved on the list. And they said, oh, OK, so you need to call a special town meeting. And I wasn't going right. to call a special town meeting just to get it authorized. And I asked them if they could wait until November. And they said, no, it had to be before that. So I'm like, well, November is a month away. <laughs> I don't even think we could pull a special town meeting off, right. which we're not going to do only yeah. a few weeks before our actual special town meeting. So we weren't eligible for the SRF, and we just ended up paying for that ourselves yeah. um, instead of going through the loan process through the state. But um, like I said, so it was on FY23. Uh, even, if, even if we did do this, like I said, it has to get approved at town meeting now. And the project probably wouldn't happen until 2024, 2025, in that range, just because of the approval processes and how it all works. And um, as we can all attest to, or at least Matt and I can attest to, uh, procuring materials to do, to do these projects right now is nearly impossible. Mm -hmm. So right. you're probably a year out to secure the pipe anyway. Um, so. By the time we went through the process and uh, uh, signed off on the SRF loan, it would have been September. And then we couldn't order parts. So it wouldn't be until next spring that we went out to bid and tried to move forward. And by the time we got pipe, it'd probably be the year after. So yeah, but that was the reason for putting it on the FY23. I have no ex expectation of doing this project in F20, FY23. But you're trying to get a town vote in F20, uh, F. FY23. Right. So we have to have a little more conversations now just because we didn't make the list on the SRF, but um, that's what I would have been looking for just because if people on the SRF list say, ah, forget it, we're not going to move forward and we don't have it at town meeting and then they move us up and say that, all right, you made the list now. Um, and we could also we could also send in a letter to dispute where they classified us, um, yeah. but I don't want to go through that process if we're not going to move forward with the project. Right, and so the, the problem that the capital committee is going to be faced with is not having a value to it, uh, um, how it affects yeah. our capital budget and how it's going to work. How do you make the recommendation? That, that's myself, I would have that, that trouble with yeah, it. I understand uh, that. So you, <coughs> we're going to need to know how it works in order for us to help you. And I'm not disputing the fact that you need it. Right. Um, but, but again, I agree I, with Gene. I, mean, I don't know. What, I, I I see it written down, but I don't know what the value, other than the 7.5 million, um, how to get paid for. I think that's what we'll need to yep. help you get it to the point. You're going to be faced with the same questions at, at town meeting. As soon as you All put right. that on, everybody's here stands up and says, uh, so <laughs> how's this get paid for? And you're like, well, uh, we're working on that. Yeah. So, uh, that doesn't flow. No, not typically. I, I'm aware of not that. Not typically, so. <coughs> Anybody else have any 
comments, uh, concerns for Bob on that? Brandon? I do not. You guys? No? I'm good. Matt or Gene, you have anything to add to that? No? Okay. All right, so FY24, um, the Kubota, that was the other paper that you were looking at there, so I just have a, a price on that. Um, that's a mini excavator. Uh, we sized it so it would be something that we could pull with the regular size pickup trucks. Uh, so we wouldn't need a, a Class B license or a CDL. Um, we could move it around with the, the regular full size pickups we have. Uh, we looked at it buying that with a dump trailer. We could load the mini excavator into a dump trailer and go wherever we need to in town. Um, I know Highway would probably have some use for it as well, but uh, we have a lot of small small jobs, either a hydrant that got broke or is inoperable and we have to dig it up and replace it, um, or some of the valves that I was speaking of that need to be replaced or curb stops for the residential customers. Um, you know, we have a lot of valves and stuff that we need to repair, but they're things that aren't like it's an emergency right now. Uh, we usually use highway to do all our digging for any of the emergency situations. Um, but there's been a couple times where we've had an emergency and it was after highway, it had been plowing for three days straight. Mm -hmm. So, you know, having them. Is that something that you that. can put multiple attachments on for such as? Like you could, and that was one of the things that I had. Big detention ponds and whatnot that they're that's, supposed to be clearing the brush and everything. Right, and that's, that's one of the things I had talked to John about. You know, we could potentially get the the brush attachment for it. So I know he does. He rents one two weeks a year, I think, mm -hmm. um, to do all the, the culverts and stuff like that. Um, I want to say it was around 10000 a year he spends. Yeah. Um, so if if we so that would be a capital expense. The the Kubota? yes. Yep. Well, because we're going with different funding things, so just I'm just so that would be a from the capital budget. Uh, well, again, that's something that I would probably shoot for through the water sewer funds, but um, okay. so I'm not I'm I'm not yep. really looking for town funds to to purchase that, that would really be through the water and sewer department. Um, and again, I mean, I have, I have no issue with highway using it when they need to to save the town money towards their projects, but <coughs> but it's just something simple that yep. we don't tie up highway and their employees to do the, yep. the small jobs that we can do without their assistance. So to simplify it so you don't have to keep going through the same question each time, if it is a, something that you think is going to be earmarked for a capital expense, if you can just tell us as you get to it, that way I'm not <laughs> torturing you with the same question each time. All right. So would you prefer to just go through the ones that are, are more capital? No, you can go right down the list. But No, you can go right down the list. But if you, something that specifically you think is going to be a capital, all right. I have been interrupted, and I don't want the red pen to come out, so go ahead, Gene. <laughs> They're all capital. It's just a different right. funding source. So when you look at the capitalist, he is, would be self-funding, so would automatically, if they had the money available, it would be on the capital list, but it would be a transfer from the water to the retained earnings account. Yep. Thank so you. So it's whether or not he's looking for uh, capital funds of you see through our free cash process or through his retained earnings. So it would still be on the capital article though. Yep. So Thank you for clarification, but yeah, that's it. So if it's coming out of the capital, free cash funds is what? You need to know. I, I would just like to know, and just for the committee's uh, sake, uh, all this information is helpful so everybody yep. can see what in the future what's coming down the road. Yep. Thank you, Gene. So, uh, the next one is I and I work throughout town, uh, most likely doing pipelining. Um, I don't have a number for it yet, so we have another phase of the I and I study that we'll be doing this year. Um, what does I and I stand for? Inflow and infiltration. So it's on the wastewater side, uh, all the manholes. If there's cracks in the pipe and water, like groundwater is leaking into the system, uh, we want to try to catch that and make sure it doesn't happen because now that water's coming down to the treatment plant, we got to spend the money and effort to treat it uh, when it's just rainwater. So, so inflow is when it's coming in through like pipes and stuff like that and infiltration is when it's coming in through manholes or you know, crack 
manholes or holes in a cover or something where where storm water's running into it. Or somebody's got to lift it up with a brick in it. Yeah. yeah. Or someone might have a, uh, a sump pump in their house. <clears throat> We've had a few of those in town where you know somebody put a perimeter drain and piped it into a sump in their house and they're pumping it from there into the sewer department, into the sewer, st uh, sewer pipe, so. No. Yeah. <laughs> Read that one, people. Yeah. So, uh, so this summer we'll probably be looking to do some smoke testing um, throughout town and try to identify. We we've, we've done the preliminary part of the I and I. Uh, Beyond God, Kent. <laughs> yeah, we will have to notify the fire department. <laughs> <That's on> fire. <laughs> when people have the, you know, that that's where we find the vents that have been incorrectly piped in the house where they don't go through the roof and they come into the into the attic and we fill their house with smoke and uh, they start calling Kent saying my house is on fire so <laughs> um, so I don't have the exact dollar amount yet um, so I just kind of ballparked a million dollars um, again that would probably be a loan that the water sewer department would be paying for that's nothing that would be on uh, taxpayers uh, water sewer vehicle um, we're looking for something, this would be a smaller vehicle, just something for the, the uh, administrative assistant or myself just to drive around, coming back and forth to the town hall, uh, going to the post office, stuff like that. So we're not using, you know, the bigger trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, we're short on vehicles as it is. Um, so we haven't identified the vehicle yet, uh, being next year. and price fluctuations all over the place. I would prefer something like an electric vehicle, um, but that has to be discussed with the, the commissioners before I can make a decision. Again, that wouldn't be uh, town funds, that would be enterprise funds. So the North Street Water Sewer and Tank Project, uh, that's a large one. That kind of depends on certain other projects that may be moving forward. Um, so that one, you know, the engineers estimated it's about a twelve and a half million dollar project. So that's to fix the sewer, replace the water main, put a storage tank up at the top of North Street, uh, potentially realigning the road a little bit and full overlay. So it's new pavement, curb to curb. So all these water and sewer main projects, I should, I wasn't sure how to put them in here, but. That project for twelve and a half million, there's engineering that has to be done before you get to the construction portion. That's kind of outside of those typical construction loans. Um, so the engineering on that would be six hundred twenty-five thousand or somewhere thereabouts, um, and that should really be done in the previous year, uh, just so we're ready. Uh, we would probably be filing for a a mass works grant um, and then a portion of this would probably be between ratepayers and taxpayers and depending on what we can get for loans and potential contractors to contribute funds as well. Bob, you mentioned enterprise fund. Does that amount of money fluctuate much from year to year based on fees and things or uh, well we try to we try to base our our rates so you know we can't we can't be bringing in millions of dollars extra. So uh, we typically you try to. Huh? No, I mean <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the ratepayers won't put up for that. No. But um, we trip, typically try to budget so that it comes up to about fifty thousand dollars a year going into retained earnings. Okay. Um, and that varies based on connections and new developments. Um, so that can be all over the place, but. Um, so when you're doing your budgeting for your department, is that enterprise fund chunk of something you rely on to do stuff? Or? We, we typically don't rely on that for the day-to-day -day operations, but we do look to that if we're doing some of these out of the ordinary things. Um, like do you when spend we that every year? The enterprise funds. Uh, we have for the last several because we've had a lot of larger projects that we were trying to move forward with. Um, so it did supplement the budget, but it was we had specific, I would call them capital, but they're not capital in this respect. They were <coughs> repairing or replacing existing things.
things that we needed to, to take care of. Um, like the booster station, we did use retained earnings for that. We also use retained earnings for purchase in the property at Mobile Pipeline uh, when that came up. So a lot of these bigger projects that we move forward with, we did end up using retained earnings as opposed to taking loans out. So um, we're in decent shape that way. We don't have a ton of money in retained earnings because we did utilize it for a lot of those larger projects um, instead of taking loans. But uh, so we have drawn that down a bit. Uh, we're working on trying to bring it back up. But again, we got a whole bunch of projects here that will probably hamper that efforts. But <clears throat> we're hoping uh, some of the new revenue from some of the buildings everyone's working on, everything to make it so that those will come in. Uh, We'll bring some additional revenues in. Thanks. Anybody have any questions on the North Street? No. Brandon? Yeah. Uh, water sewer pickup truck. Uh, once we get more fully staffed, we would need additional vehicles. Uh, so I'm just estimating about 2025, we'd be looking for an additional vehicle there. Just to skip ahead, FY26, I had anticipated replacing one of the other trucks that would be about 15 years old at that time. The other project for FY25 was the Depot Street and Railroad Ave water main replacement. So that's about 6,000 feet of old cast iron line. Uh, estimated at about 1.9 million. So FY24, we should probably be looking at 95,000 in engineering. FY26, uh, Gilboa Street to Manchog Street, that's about 2,150 feet, and that would be estimated about 800,000, and again, the year before, FY25 should have about 45,000 for the engineering on that project. Towards the replacement truck, uh, let's see, West Street, looking to replace the water main on that street, about 5,100 feet. That's all old AC pipe. If you don't know what that is, asbestos cement line <laughs> pipe. So um, it's just old pipe. It's undersized. It's only six inch. Uh, it would increase the fire flows and it would increase the redundancy. If we had a problem on Main Street, it could come down Rydell Street to uh, supply the rest of the town. Rydell would be another one that you'd probably do in conjunction with the West Street project. Uh, again, West uh, Rydell is about half cast iron and half AC. Um, that pipe should be upgraded as well. <coughs> uh, then we had the Depot Street water and sewer extent, or that's supposed to be uh, Davis Street, not Depot Street, uh, yeah. extension. So some of these these water main projects and like I said the depot depot Davis Street water and sewer extension those would all depend on what's going on within the town. Um, I try to talk with John as to what roads he intends to pave because we don't want to have him pave a road and then go and rip it up to do a water main replacement. So we try to look at those projects and tie those together as well. That's the one you just got the grant on for engineering. So they did the engineering on the or we're in the middle of putting that together to do the engineering on, yes, so. That's Davis? Davis yeah. Street, correct, not Davis. <laughs> so that would be extending up to open up uh, potential additional commercial industrial growth for the tax revenue. And like I said, depending on how the projects move forward, uh, if we saw more of an immediate need for that, it would move up in the, the fiscal years. And then a replacement mower. Uh, we've got a ton of hours on the, the lawn mower that we currently have. Uh, all the pump stations and everything, we have quite a bit of grass to mow, so I would estimate about FY27 we'll be looking to replace that. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Sullivan? Ken? No. Sir, go ahead. Thank Good you. job. Really? Um, do, on the Davis Street, you said the engineering was done. 
No, it's no. not done yet. We uh, we received a grant through right. the uh, MassWorks right. to do the engineering, and we're in the process of moving forward with that. We haven't have not done that yet. And is the three thousand five hundred the amount you received? No, that's three point five million. I'm sorry. That's the project. Right. Three hundred and what was it? Three hundred thirty. Three hundred fourteen. Well, it was three hundred fourteen thousand in a grant, and I think we had what thirty-five thousand. Yeah. Match. That was the one that. Um, yeah. Mr. Manarik had put together the mass works. He, uh, yeah. he what he got three thousand, uh, three million dollars, three million for, uh, for the, the Tri Town yeah. water and sewer yeah. project. I did yeah. yeah. So technically, the grant for Davis Street is called site readiness. Right. It is a different program. The mass works. Thank you, Brandon. I'm good. You're good, bud. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for your help. The rest of the people in the room from the school department is up next. You can come up if you want, Paul. Good morning. How you doing, Jeff? Good. How are you? Good. Is this up on SharePoint? It's up on SharePoint. He has... Uh, if you go into the, your uh, your documents mm -hmm. after you get into the fiscal year 23, and then there's a whole section school of the department. school. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any handouts, Jeff? I thought she said them. You don't have anything with anything on? I'm not on ship. <laughs> you know what? I can go off. I can answer to all of them. I don't, I don't need to look at them. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> yeah. It's ten cents a page, surely. <laughs> I put in enough time. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a lot. More important. Okay, Jeff, yeah. we'll let you run the show. Do All right, so uh, Douglas Primary School oil tank. Uh, in October, um, October this past year, we um, we, we have what we assume was a clogged oil line. Um, so what happened is we ended up emptying the oil tank. It, the tank was cleaned. Uh, we did a um, we did a tank tightness test, which it passed. Uh, it was determined it was in good condition from the inside of the tank. Um, but the tank, uh, we don't know if it went in. We're assuming 79. That's 1979 is when the permit was pulled. Um, so based on the age, it's assumed that it's a single well tank. So if we do develop a leak and we don't know what the exterior of the tank looks like, it's, there's no containment um, like there would be with the tank if you buy it today with a secondary. We have containment. It, it's a, a second wall, which will contain the oil. Um, any questions I can answer on that? On the... Uh, 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 if everybody else has a question before I even get into it. You have anything on that, Ken? You're replacing a 5,000 with a 10,000 gallon tank? That's the middle school. Oh, that's the middle school. He's on yeah. the primary school. So you have a 10,000 in the ground now? Yes. Okay, go ahead. I'll catch up. Dick? Uh, no. Billy? No. Billy? Not at this time. Brandon? Uh, no, I didn't know. Okay, so the question I have for you, what, what's your annual consumption in the uh, primary school? About 15,000. On your worst day, how much do you use a day? Mm. There's a method to my madness, so that's why I'm going through this. Well, I mean, I'm measuring it with a stick, so you're only so accurate or swimming. So, so two knots, three knots? Um, <laughs> probably 150 gallons. 150 gallons a day. How low do you let it go? Um, I just filled it at 48 inches. Oh, well, sorry. All right, so, sorry. Uh, so 48 inches. So half. how tall is the tank? I'm assuming 96. 96. So, so at 50 percent, you're filling it. Pretty much. Do you ever let it go lower than that? Uh, actually, I try to. So the there's a 90 percent rule. So if you if you're filling the tank, you can't fill it more than 90 percent because mm -hmm. you'll have a spill. If, right. When you're filling, it hits the curve of the tank. Um, 
So what I do is I let it, our contract right now is that the minimum delivery is 3,500, so when I get there, I try to, I try to get that delivered to keep as much oil in the tank as possible. So how low could you let it go? That's what my question was. So I get what your minimum delivery, that would I, have been possible. I wouldn't. The rest of my question, but that's okay. I wouldn't go what below What are you comfortable at? Huh? 40%. That's where I'd want to see the truck there. So 4,000. Typically don't get that. It usually don't get that low. So that's like a 30-day supply of oil. 4,500 at 150 a day on 30 days would be yeah. 4,500 gallons. Um, and the reason why I'm asking you this is I'm trying to figure out how you determine the size of the tank. Um, because you have a 10,000 in the, in the ground, do we need a 10,000? Could you be more competitive with a 5,000 gallon tank? Um, because you're going to have a brand new tank, so you're not going to have any issues as far as sediment and whatever else is in, in this tank. So when the building was constructed, it was the original section, I think, was 31,000 square feet. Yeah. And so we've since added the cafeteria, the extension that, that goes out to the east towards the elementary school, I think, is... I mean, it, it's we've added 7,000 square feet to the building so since the original... Tank yeah, no, in. no, I get that. Um, but you just told me that you use on your heaviest day is 150 gallons a day. Estimated. So, okay. <clears throat> I'm just trying to help you through the process. So, if you could be more, if you could be more um, economical by going with a smaller tank, is that an opportunity, an option for you? If not, if you're stuck on 10,000, then you're stuck on 10,000, which is fine. So, you're the one that's presenting, so I'm just so asking. The, so the middle school, which is also here, that did have a 10,000 gallon tank, and I cannot answer why um, or how it was determined to go to a 5,000 at the time. We had an oil spill in 2005, yeah. um, which was caused by a day tank and a generator. Um, and I don't know the reason why that tank was pulled, but it was pulled. It was uh, replaced with a 5,000. So the issue we're having with 5,000 is that, um, like I said, the contract is having us do deliveries when we can take 3,500. Well, if I wait to 3,500, I'm down to 1,000 gallons in the tank, which, which gets us way lower than we want to be. Um, especially when, it's, when we're in really cold situations. So, so, and that's a much bigger. Facility. Only because I don't right. know the answer. You have multiple buildings, multiple tanks. Right? What do you have? Four, four of them. Yes. Okay. So, if, if you get a delivery and they go to all four buildings, is that considered one delivery or is that considered four deliveries? Four deliveries. So why is that? Um, I wish I could answer that. I've tried to combine them to, to, to satisfy How often the do you do your contract? Just yearly? Yes. It may be a consideration that you note that, that you make that as part of your... And either, you, either you address, address the minimum delivery or you address the aggregate deliveries um, because they get in the best of both worlds here. So you've got to give 3,500 gallons four different times to four different buildings where... Um, I've had conversations with Adam about uh, town buildings, and they'll go around and deliver to all of them. One of them took as little as 48 gallons. He's not, it's not considered a separate one, is it? Mm -hmm. They just consider it a delivery. It goes around and tops it off. Just to be more competitive, we all have to be responsible to, to the taxpayers, so it just it seems like it would be a logical approach to to ask that question, whether or not, if you're in a contract, you're in a contract, but moving forward to I, address that. I hope that happens because I think it's in the in the vendor's interest with the cost of fuel. You're in the driver's seat. When, when you send it out the bid, you're in the driver's seat. You, you, can, you can set the specs as to what you want, and you're not going to have people say, well, no, no, I'm not going to deliver it to you. I don't think that would happen. It hasn't happened in a, from Adam's point of view, so uh, what he's doing. So it might be something that maybe you can talk to him and 
and help you through that process. But we're getting back to the size of the tank. So what's dictating the size of your tank from what you're saying to me is you don't like to go to less than half a tank and you have to get a minimum of 3,500 gallons. So you have, you need at least a 7,000 gallon tank. So it's a 5,000 or a 10,000 gallon tank. Anybody else have anything on the tank uh, now that I terrorize for Jeff? My okay. questions. <laughs> you have anything, Ken? No. Yeah, nothing. Okay, item three. Uh, District-wide front-mounted field mower replacement. Uh, this has been in service since 2003-2004 uh, when the high school was built. Um, it does most of the athletic field work. It does all the, the really uh, difficult terrain spaces like below the scoreboard at the high school if you're driving up the driveway you see those slopes it, uh, so it it uh, it works quite a lot um, I think the hours are in the around 2,000 are on the machine right now um, any questions on that no major Expense put into rebuilding this one, like no, the it one does, in the past that I had. It does have some uh, hydraulic leaks where the yeah, but you needs up. didn't just recently get a new motor and bucket and nope. whatnot on it. No, no, no just annual service. Yeah. The, I mean, the services that we do yearly. Anybody have any questions on his mower? And what's the estimate for the price? Uh, it was quoted at twenty nine thousand five forty seven this year. Twenty nine thousand five five forty seven. What's the expected age and uh, longevity of that thing? Um, I mean, so we're we're at about twenty years with the. It, it, it mm -hmm. basically matches what we have. Yep. That's the equivalent of, of that of what you can buy today in the model today. And this is the John Deere. Yes. And do you have a hand on them? It's. It is in here. It is? Yes. I mean, there's a lot of John Deere stuff. Oh, there. there's two. Yeah, yeah. you did. No. Is that the two? Yeah. Look in the back. No. 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 Maybe there were two sets. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I didn't see it here. I think it's. Well, I don't know. But John Deere's just written here. I'm just wondering if. All the equipment is John Deere. I love seeing water sewer using Kubota. Uh, and I mean, the last she is in that? But no, we have a lot of equipment from them, though. I'm only teasing you. <laughs> because we can afford it, because yep. it's not John Deere. Yep. Well, we, the last time I presented this, I requoted, um, I went back and quoted Kubota, and it was about $500. It was within that amount. Um, for the, so that would be their equivalent model to what we're just matching it up to horsepower and, and all. Now, um, with water sewer and and now with you too, some of these are diesel equipment. Uh, the, yes. Does Both. Um, what do you do? Just go to Bex for diesel fuel? Yes. Is there? Can the town put in a diesel tank somewhere for? Um, I, there's always a there's always a possibility of um, putting in a tank, um, but there's a lot of planning that goes into that. Yeah. So, yeah. if for argument's sake, if you put it up near the highway bond, yeah. right, you would say, "Well, that'd be a great place." You're in the watershed, so you can't just put okay. an above ground tank up there. But it's something that's been floating around, so it, it's out there. Um, it'll be addressed at some point. It's on my bucket list. I didn't want you to. I didn't want to give you an aneurysm, so I figured I'd jump in on that one. so much money. Yeah, yeah. That's one of his, Matt's pet projects because <laughs> we, we we do spend a tremendous amount of money, needlessly. But there's hurdles to go go over to get to that point. <clears throat> anybody else? Uh, anybody have anything on this last item? No. Brandon. Uh, number four, Douglas High School repipe Bunsen burner and electric shutoff valves. Uh, that was on last year, wasn't it? Jeff? Yeah. So when we 
We did a pressure test on on the propane system mm -hmm. that that did that did does and did exist, um, and we could not locate the leaks. So the uh, the supplier took the regulator off the building, and because of that, they they won't even leave the regulator on the building. Um, so it was felt uh, we had plumbers come in and. Uh, could not locate the source of the leaks, which uh, they believe is underneath the slab. So this was the least expensive route to go. Uh, I believe the building principal only needed two of the labs to um, to have burners that operate. So we're going to move um, uh, you there, Chief. Uh, so they that, didn't make all that happen. last year? It did not. Okay. Uh, so we were going to move that. Um, to the front of the building and then um, just run it up to the two second floor labs from there. And do you have a price on that? Yep, 22000 they been doing I forget I mean I know we talked about reloc re relocating the tanks um, what have they been doing for those classes now I don't believe they've been I know there was talk of using the portable ones but I don't think I don't know that that's ever happened Chief, in the past few years because of COVID they really haven't done any collaborative work that makes sense you know, social distancing so we really haven't had to use the bots and burners okay Can, it, can we back up for a second? There's something I forgot to ask you. On the uh, oil tank, the $140,000 price tag you put on that, is that everything, the environmental closeout, because you have to do, you have to take the old tank out, you have to do your reports. So it was estimated. We had it quoted in 2000. So we had the, we had the middle school quoted in 2019. Um, at 123,000, and that was everything at that time. And you're assuming that 17 would, and just adding another 17 to it? Yeah, I, I beg for quotes, and it, yeah, you, it's it's pretty hard. <laughs> it's, it can be just difficult getting with quotes. With the way steel prices have risen, have risen over the last couple of years, which Matt can attest to that with his pipe that he's been chasing all over the world. Um, yep. The uh, you may want to double check that just to make sure. Yep. Douglas Primary School cafeteria tables. Uh, so there's 14. The tables that we have now uh, have been in use at least 25 years. They've been here as long as I have. Um, the um, so the springs, the torsion bars that that make it so you can actually lift them. They're all they're all shot. The wheels. Um, they're very heavy. Very hard to move. Um, and that's, other than that, there's not a whole lot more to the cafeteria tables. And do you have an estimate on that? Yep, 30,000. 30, I believe that price went up 8,500 in one year. Was 21 and changed the last time that uh, we quoted the same, the same tables. Anybody have any questions on the tables? I. Yeah. Jeff, I, you have a lot of stuff here, and and I'm just trying to help you out. But um, is there any criteria? with school equipment that 
you could go to that would show uh, in in writing what the expected useful life is of say a table or something to that effect like the cafeteria tables um possibly through the vendor i mean i would think i could get that from the vendor so we're at, like i said we're at 25 with those and 25 that's what, plus that's what i'm saying i mean at some point you got to draw the line i mean it's the same thing with a fire truck sooner or later it becomes an issue it's either a safety issue or something to that effect and wasn't if i remember correctly last year was there something about when you fold them up they become dangerous yeah i mean when you lift them you're without that torsion bar to right that's what I'm so so i'm just trying to if, if you could have like something that we could go to as a criteria say um, maybe the cafeteria association of whatever actually <laughs> recommends this or that as far as when tables or desks and things like that should be be uh, and that way you're not just shooting in the dock you have so, you have a reference to go to mm -hmm. so that it's not just you saying well these are old you know what I'm saying well actually you, you could um, it might be at a simplified because it's kind of hard to go back 30 years ago and figure out how long or 25 or whatever it is, it is um, how long that table was supposed to last. But if he wants to replace an, an older table with, with the new one, they must have an idea of what well, the lifetime. So we could go to like the ff &E people that say did the Like we the elementary fire department school. has National Fire Protection Association, OSHA, all that type of stuff. There might, there might be places you can look for that stuff. Anybody else have anything on the tables? Okay, the next two are not mine. Well, you can take the next one because it's off the list. <laughs> right. Take credit for that one, Jeff, while you're here. <laughs> oh, no. <That's laughs> Mike, do you want Jeff to go through his entire 23, 24, 25, 26? Uh, do you... I keep going before this young lady comes up. Does she have anything other than these uh, next three things on her list? Stuff at 23, 24, 23 and 24. Yep. 23 and 4. Since she only has the uh, four items, why don't we let her come up and speak and then she can get back to work? Okay. Thanks. I know you're enjoying this. But <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. If we can roll you early, we, we might as well. Yes. Okay. All right, just for the minute taker, what's your name? So I'm Raquel Hammond, the food service director. Yep, thank you. Yep. So um, priority number seven is the Douglas Middle School convection oven. The quote that I have is actually a double convection oven, which would bring us sort of into modern times. Um, since I started this school year, I had um, a technician come out in August and do sort of an assessment on our equipment, like our main equipment that we really need to have in order to prepare food for the kids. So um, these two items in 23 are really, we're on the edge of not being able to keep up with food production. This school year alone, um, the convection oven at the middle schools, well, there's two of them, they're both at least 20 years old. Um, on the brink of not being able to get parts for them anymore just because that's what these manufacturers are doing. They're just going away with old models and now all well, you can get is new models so you can't get parts that you need anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of the situation we're running into. At least twice this school year we were down to one of two ovens and that really inhibits us from you know making food from scratch because not only we need to cook food for today but we need to be preparing food for the future as well. So there's just not literally not enough oven space, um, you know, and where they're not reliable, we're really running a risk of not being able to heat enough food there. Any questions on the ovens? What's the cost? They're 94, 74. Yeah. For how many? It's up for uh, two ovens. Do they replace what you currently have with how much you can make or are they bigger or hotter? Or? So they're the same size as the ones that we have now, but it surely would be more efficient because they would be there together as a set versus one on one side and one on the complete opposite side of the kitchen. <laughs> 
just more efficient for you know for the manager to do her cooking for and staging. yeah right for sure Kelly uh, no I just asked a question yeah. Shirley okay. Brandon all good thank you all right hey. you guys are all set okay so the next one on the list is the high school steam jacketed kettle um, so that is currently not functioning at all um, like I said when I came in I had the equipment assessed this is a unit that has an old boiler that's you know original to the building and it's not fixable tried mm -hmm. to get tried to get that fixed in August could not do it so this whole school year she's been working without a steamer and working without a steam kettle which is making just a simple point of boiling water nearly impossible um, safely. You know, they've had to sort of rig them a roll and do what they can to keep up with the, you know, food production, but not having a steam kettle, and thankfully we got a grant for the steamer, um, but that's been a huge challenge to them, and especially with, like I said, with batch cooking, you, we really need the space to, you know, to make our food and keep up, and especially where the high school is an emergency shelter. If, God forbid, there were ever a situation where we had to do large volume cooking, or if our enrollment expanded in a few years to a point where we have more kids to feed in the same amount of time, then we're risking not being able to keep up with that as well. Is the current um, sort of setup able to take new stuff in terms of yep. electricity or updated? standards for yes and all that yeah. yes in fact um, last week Jeff and I met with an electrician to make sure that um, you know the wiring was all in place hoping that you know piece by piece we can sort of rebuild the food production area and is it yes right Jeff yes yeah cost so the go ahead good the cost for the steam kettle is 15574 and that's today. You know, everything's expected to... So these costs that you have, these are to the penny? Well, these are the quotes that I have got from my vendors, the state contract. Yeah. So for this year, yes. How, but long, how long are they valid for? Usually these quotes last a month at a time. Unfortunately, um, okay. for instance, the steamer that I got the grant for, you know, the grant was submitted in November, and by the time I was notified that I was awarded in March, the price went up fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, so if that if you if you were able to achieve getting your your funding for the fifteen five seventy four and it went up fifteen hundred, would you still get your kettle? Yes. How would you do that? We would have to fund it through okay. the food service. Okay. No, I'm just yeah. asking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely essential oh. to the, you know, to the operation. Anybody have any questions on the kettle? Seeing as none, I guess you didn't. Oh, I'd just like to make a comment. It's nice to see that you did some homework and that you uh, actually brought people to assess your equipment. Mm -hmm. And you get kudos for understanding and uh, realizing that it's an emergency shelter and we have used it in the past when we had a tornado where Team Rubicon came in and cooked for a week there. So I appreciate that. Thank you. I think, I think Matt, we also used it during the pandemic as well, didn't we? Yes. What is a steamer? I've never used one. A steamer? Yeah. So a steamer is an equipment that basically cooks with with hot steam. So instead of you know boiling and draining and doing that whole process, it's a way to like quickly steam vegetables. With, with what is it? A big vat or? A, so uh, it's it's like a box and it has rows where you can put pans of food like in a perforated pan so the hot steam goes through it's used for you know like meats keeping meats moist and it's a really good way to cook certain things so that they don't lose quality it keeps the freshness and color for instance like broccoli if you're to roast broccoli it's going to turn like a dark ugly brown That's and dry problem. out <laughs> you steam it you're going to get a fresh moist bright green but color vegetable we'll have a slightly used steamer for sale 
I'll, I'll find a, a free <laughs> actually to replace the parts. You get a bamboo insert for your the high school steamer is out of commission, so that has not worked this this whole school year. Steam by broccoli. Yeah, see. Nice and bright. I roast. Good. Healthier. <laughs> now I'm hungry. <laughs> it's healthier. It's a, much healthier. And again, the school meals program, we have targets of sodium levels that we need to reach. So using fresh fruits and vegetables and frozen vegetables and steaming them is is really vital to maintaining those sodium limits. Because the more we buy canned and processed food, Did you, know. you bring any samples because of fire? Yeah. No. No, but if you come by the schools in an hour, we'll, we'll have it ready. <laughs> Don't go telling them that. <laughs> come on. Cover my, it's my lunch broccoli. time. <laughs> I'm going to cover my broccoli in a lot of butter and a lot of salt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not a student, so we'll allow it. What's <laughs> even better is sometimes broccoli with garlic, olive oil. Making me wicked hungry. Sorry. Okay, so your next item would be in 24? Yep. So the next item is in um, FY24. That is the middle school steam kettle, um, and again, super vital um, to everyday food production. Just as simple as boiling pasta. It sounds like a simple thing, but when you're cooking for almost 200 kids, it's a lot, you know, it's the more the staff are handling boiling water, the more likely they get burned or injured, um, slips and falls. So the steam kettle is really is a safety net for a way for them to cook food in large volume without putting them at risk of slipping, falling, and um, you know, unfortunately, I have seen that happen with the stove top. You know, if somebody's carrying too big of a pot. It's it's just not it's not it's a safety hazard. Do you ever serve lobster for the kids? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. They do at but but seafood <laughs> but seafood could be a meat alternate option. So. It's not off the table if <laughs> we can afford it. <laughs> so is that the same price, fifteen five seventy four? Yes. And that's of course, you know Another with two years, right? Right. FY twenty four, so Right. So right now, luckily, um, we were able to get it running this summer when I had the tech come out and sort of bring me bring us back to life. However, due to the age of it, it's from nineteen eighty seven. There are no more parts available. We're lucky that it was more of like a plumbing fix mm -hmm. that got it running. But if it is to go down another way, then most likely we're out of luck. You good? I'm hungry, good. but I'm good. Good? <laughs> good? Yeah, we got to get her away from the table. <laughs> We're going to lose one of our members. <laughs> you good, Brandon? That's good, thank you. Okay. Um, so the next item is the high school convection oven. Now it's, again, it's sim very similar where these equipment are getting older and older and manufacturers just stop making replacement parts. This school year, um, you know, we've spent a lot of our own resources trying to maintain and keep up with these ovens. Um, but because of their age, they're just not reliable. This high school ovens, there's four of them right now. And at, at multiple points of this school year, half of them were not in service. We either replacing the electrical board, we're replacing the motor, the other electrical board, another motor. And it's just, it's, it's becoming like an obstacle to the food production. In the high schools especially, you know, they're doing well over 200 lunches a day plus 50 to 60 breakfast that's expected to go up. So um, it's just making it really challenging for them to keep up with food production when half of the time their ovens aren't working. So those definitely are a priority for us. And that's 94747. Yep. At today's number. Yeah. Right. And the other one was in the middle school? Correct. How about the primary school? How's that, the equipment over there? Not good. Um, the only saving grace with the primary school is that um, we're not necessarily preparing food there right now. 
with the enrollment the way it is. However, you know, if things change in the future and we get more kids at the primary school, then it would make way more sense to just cook there. Um, for the time being, we're sort of just shuffling food around and using the elementary as a satellite kitchen, central kitchen, and serving the primary kids. I just know it's the older school. You would think you would have the older equipment. Oh, yes. <laughs> Certainly not, um, right. <laughs> you know, not in good shape okay. as well. So the last thing on my list is the middle school steamer. I, I mean, I, yeah, I hate to repeat myself. Yeah, we do, we do. And luckily it's working right so now. So you get two there, another one. This would, this would essentially replace it because... Um, but this you already is, talked about it. That was the... Um, In 2024. The steamer for the middle school. Yeah, and yeah what are so, you talking about now? Well, so previously we talked about the high school steamer. So that was a. Oh, so we're still talking. That about was the removed. School. Yeah, the middle school steamer. So they have one right now that's, you know, again original to the kitchen setup, and it's just only a matter of time before we don't have it. Not having it's just inhibiting food production and putting the staff more at risk every time they're trying to manually blanch vegetables themselves. Yeah, I, th I think Ellie might. Have, <coughs> you talked about the steam jacketed kettle. Okay. And oh. now you have a steamer. So there are uh, two different things. So a kettle isn't a box. No, a kettle is literally like a big vat. Yeah. With a lid. Yep. Okay. Did you cook broccoli in that or just in the No, box? the broccoli goes in the steamer. <laughs> right. <laughs> you got it. She used the explanation for right. the item that we're on now for the, okay. for the kettle. Right. Yep. right. <clears throat> yeah, the kettle is more for big volume sauce boiling, you know, pasta and things like that, stews and soups, things like that. What time is it? 1.30? <laughs> Almost time for Ken to eat. <laughs> so I want chop suey. Does anybody have any questions on it for the steamer? <laughs> no. But good explanations. Thank you. And again, the price, but this is FY24. So. Right. Yeah, it's a placeholder for as yeah. is up to date information as she has at this point. Right. You have anything, Brandon? I do not. You're not sneaking any snacks over there, are you? I'm not, no. I, I keep seeing you disappear off the screen, so I didn't know if you were He's getting angry or something. I know the rules. All right. All right. Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item is Douglas High School repairs with extension paving to the back access road of the high school. So this, uh, currently the access road is, um, there's some damage around the, um, the east side of the building. Uh, it's incre it increases every year, there's more pavement coming up. Uh, the edges are cracked. Um, so that's the estimate to to do the repairs and to widen it two feet because we thought it would accommodate Sanders and when the fire department needs to go around the back and just. Um, and how much is that? Oh, we don't have. 30, oh, I'm sorry, 30, 36, 180. Was this funded at any point already? No. Because I thought this was funded at one point. No. No. It was never funded? No. no. Was, it, was that crack ceiling that might have been funded? I don't know. I That's thought on here too. funding for an access row behind the school. I'd have to look back through the stuff that we have, but um, until it wasn't there. So I was confused. Okay. Anybody have any questions for? Jeff on the access road. And this is for 2024, right? Mm -hmm. right. No, you can jump on to the next one. Yes, uh, so district-wide 
tractor replacement. Uh, the, the machine that's in service now was purchased in 2003, 2004, uh, when the high school went up. Um, it has close to 3,000 hours on it. It's currently in the shop. They're recommending that we only fix the hydraulic lines and run it till, till it can't. Um, the um, it's it's very rusty. Um, that their description was rusty, crusty. Um, and like I said, their recommendation was only to fix the the hydraulic line issues that are with it now and run it as long as. Is this we can. the same track that from last year? Yes. This gets stored outside? No, it's inside. Um, the, so the prices that we get are, those are state contract prices too, on John Deere. I okay. believe. Is that this? Number nine and, oh. You know. Well, no, I don't Yeah, know. you don't so have that. So is it okay. uh, 44099 or? 39337. Oh, 39, 337. I'll get this to you then. You said that was a, oh, what year is it? 04, the, the one that we have now, yeah. 03, 04. So you expect you get? About 20. 20 years out of it. So originally that, um, when we purchased it, um, the dealer came down, we walked the grounds, and so it was intended for the high school, but since the middle school site's been reconfigured, there's much more sidewalk. Um, so it gets used at the high school, the majority, but then we tend to move over to the other building. That, in, as far as when we're doing snow, um, it gets moved around quite a bit. It also is the um, only machine that we have that can handle uh, the slice seater attachment for the fields uh, because of the weight. And the new machine would yes. accept those implements? Yes. Um, and the new machine quoted is the smallest. It, it's, uh, I believe, one size up from the one that we have, but it, um, it's the smallest size that they have that has a factory cab which apparently they hold up much better than the aftermarkets. Mm -hmm. Any questions on the uh, tractor? Brandon? Okay, so the Douglas Primary School Building Updates Renovations Facility Study. Um, if you recall, uh, uh, the recent meetings that we've had, we've had different items for the primary school. Um, and we just thought it was apparent that uh, doing a study made more sense. The, um, so, and I think we're talking mostly about the original section. So like I, I said before, um, but with the cafeteria, that was 2003 when the high school was built. That's newer, the section, um, the section that uh, heads out towards the elementary school was uh, when the middle school went up, so that was 87, 88. Um, so the issues are more the original section. Um, so the so that section of roof dates back to 1993. So that's just about 30 years old. The boiler is 1995. Um, the main water heater for for the uh, the classroom area of the building is original. Um, there uh, there's uh, we have to do an error report. Uh, schools are required to do that every three years, so it identifies asbestos. Uh, we know that there's asbestos in the mastic and the in the floor tile. Uh, some of the HVAC caulking, um, it, and it's all it's all contained. It's not it's not an issue. But I'm, when you when we get into doing work on the building, that's I'm sure going to add to to the cost. Who would conduct this study? Um, we would have to go out to bid, so it's usually done through a project manager. Um, there are various companies that, that do them and come in and do the feasibility studies. So we put out an RFP and see who would come in and do it. It's typically an architect slash engineering firm. So they would just do a study on the basic conditions of the building, or? So they would come in and do a feasibility study and, and look at the entire facility and make recommendations as to whether or not um, 
to renovate, what needs to be updated, what needs to be fixed? Is it more cost effective to repair what you currently have or tear down what you have and build something? It's basically an audit of the building and gives you a blueprint for how to move forward if we so choose to do so. And how much does this cost? Or what's they the estimate? Nothing? 25,000. 25,000. 25,000. How do you arrive at that number? I'm just curious myself. Cody and Jeff did it. Um, usually you reach out to the um, MSBA and you can look at old bits, <coughs> buildings that have the same, same square footage and feasibility studies. So if I was going to assume Cody and Jeff when they went, they did the look, we looked at what previous feasibility studies were for elementary yep. schools with a comparable square footage. All right, thank you. Anybody have any questions for Paul? Brandon? I do not. Um, I've got a couple more. John has a yeah, couple here. Yeah, I just want to see I'm sorry. You, you two all set? Okay, okay good. Um, so I'll just run through the rest of mine. Uh, the Douglas Elementary School recoat burning track. Um, I had a couple of repairs done back in the fall, and I had them just do a report on it. Uh, so when in 2013 when we started use with the track um, the recommendations maintenance recommendations are four to seven years to recoat and repaint we're in year eight now um, I believe on the report it they're recommending to um, within the next two years to do that to recoat that and repaint it and that is one hundred and nineteen thousand six hundred. Any questions? Any questions? Brandon? I do. Um, oh, we'll what, year, what year is are you requesting? Twenty six? Twenty six. Yeah. Uh, Douglas High School gymnasium painting. This is um, for a few years now, the, it's been flaking and uh, coming off, especially on the ductwork for the HVAC in, in the gym. Uh, so this is quoted to paint from the, the uh, cement block up in the underside of, of the roof. Um, so it includes um, masking off the backstops, protecting the floor. Did, last year, did you have the beams up there to be painted? Was this in the same gymnasium? Uh, the beams were, uh, that's a separate item here. So that's exterior. Okay. And how much is uh, this? 24,600. And what year are you requesting this in? FY26. Oh, that one's 26. Oh, 26. Yeah, the next one's 27. Yeah. Questions on the painting of the gym? Go ahead, Jeff. Okay, Douglas High School exterior I beam painting. Um, so I had a, uh, a vendor come out. Uh, they determined that the beams were not epoxy sealed when they were initially painted, and that's why the paint's coming off. Um, so this would be, uh, and this is on the I beams on the, the storefront in front of the cafeteria. The um, the gymnasium and the library, and a lot of a lot of this work is 20 plus feet off the ground, um, and the cost on that was 18,900. And that was on last year as well. Yes. And it didn't get funded. It did not. Any questions? <coughs> Shirley. No. Ellie. No. Brandon. Awesome. Okay. okay. Um, last item is uh, Douglas Primary School, Douglas High School crack seal driveways uh, and parking lots. Not sure how much explanation I can give on that. Oh. It's, uh, this year seems like it's an especially bad year with heaving and cracking and adding to it. Okay, well, what was the 
and you're asking for this then? FY27. 27. 27. Yeah. This was the worst of those, if you'd like to look through them. It's a lot of scrap, but it is it's important. Anybody have any questions on the crack filling? That's it, Jeff. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks for your time. How are you today? Thank you. Uh, my name is John Calabrese. I'm the technology director at the at the school. All right. Um, so we have the auditorium projector uh, on here. That's a uh, larger projector, and it. Um, it needs to be, it's, it still functions right now, and it's, I would guess that it's gonna function into the 25. The issue with that is that there's, um, the connections are older. So to have external presenters come in, um, we we eventually will need to replace this, so just for con convenience for external presenters. And um, they're gonna stop making lamps for these projectors. So I would need to, um, we have to scramble to find lamps in a few years, which I don't, we don't want to do. So that's why that's on there. Um, also, and uh, the, uh, do you have the value on those? Because you two don't have that. Right. Is oh, right. you're oh. asking him, no. No, well, no, no, well you didn't, typically you're asking how much it costs, yeah, so yeah, making yeah. sure that you knew what it was. Um, for the auditorium projector, it's uh, estimated 12,000. <coughs> And that would in, there is some labor involved because they have to run they have to run um, cabling. Uh, the second item I have this is for uh, twenty five by the way. That first one was. Yes, well, both, both, both of his requests are for twenty five. The uh, next item would be the projectors in the classrooms. Those are um, aging as well. Uh, so they uh, would need. To, they, they're going to definitely need to be replaced um, before 26, I would say. Um, I still can. They're still functioning. They are very dim, however, so that the um, students have dif would have difficulty writing while watching presentations. So that's one issue with them. Uh, the second is they're also going to be stopping making uh, uh, lamps. Actually, lamps are still available, but they're. Uh, through various sources, not necessarily a uh, approved vendor. So that's another reason why we would need to, do, to replace those. They also have no interactivity capability, so the new projectors would have the ability for the teacher to control the a fully interactive solution for, for teachers. And what do you have for price? Oh, I'm sorry. That's um, for me, sixty-five thousand. That's for twenty. Twenty of them. Twenty yep. units. Yeah. Would that replace all of them then? Or it would replace. Them? It would replace all of the ones that are older. So oh. they've been. Uh, so a few of them have gone over the years, and so they've been replaced with newer, newer projectors. Gotcha. How how many would be remaining? Um, uh, to replace for the high school, you mean? Uh, probably fifteen. Eventually, but those are not necessary at the moment. Mm -hmm. yep. And you specifically said high school, so now you led me into asking. Uh -oh. that, uh, the other schools have the same issues. They do not. They have uh, much newer projectors, yep. um, and they do have interactivity yep. capabilities. Any questions? Yes, Ellie. Um, I, I'm just sort of behind on schools these days um, and uh, I'm wondering I thought everybody had a computer in schools why don't they use those as their projectors uh, they, well they do uh, um, I'm not sure I follow um, you mean the, the teacher basically the way that the projector is it's hooked up to the teacher's computer so that's what's what's giving them a, a that's what's projecting actually is the teacher's computer so, so, when, well, so, so when the classroom teacher is, for instance, putting notes up, like give, uh, a history teacher is lecturing on 
whatever topic it is, and they're doing their PowerPoint slide, they're projecting that on the screen so kids can go through it. If a classroom teacher is showing a video of something or showing a news clipping of something, they project that so the kids can look at it and they may not necessarily have it. The students may not necessarily have it on their computer. A lot of times too, in order to make sure the kids are actively engaged in class and paying attention, you like the kids to shut the computer so they can focus in on the teacher. <laughs> when the, when the computer screens are open, it can lead sometimes to um, unnecessary distractions. Yeah. Okay. I yeah, yep. that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and in school, I was never a victim of undistracted. Oh, right. <laughs> just for the record. Um, just one question. Sure. Uh, for the 20 units, is that for which school? Are you that's for the high school. High school. Okay, thank you. Sure. <laughs> Brandon? All set, sir. Thank you. That's all you have, bud? That's it. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. your time. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions for me? No. Anybody have any questions for Paul? He's the superintendent of the schools. If nobody's met him. No. I think you're good to go, bud. Right. Easy speeding. I've been to all day. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we're just set. We're just setting you up for the next one. That's all. Matt's going to call me with something. <laughs> Don't get too excited. <laughs> Okay, before we uh, set our next agenda, anybody have any questions for Gene or uh, Matt for the, in this process that we're going through? No? Do you have anything you would like to add or anything, Mr. Administrator? Just one quick thing, I'm going to look to Gene for some help. I have what people refer to as the misery virus. <laughs> Didn't get me sick enough to keep me home. <laughs> it's just making me miserable. So I'll try to enunciate. On the building officials' requests, <clears throat> I'm in between thoughts as to how to fund those. Um, right now, I actually have them in the operating budget, but I don't have an offsetting amount of one-time revenues built into the revenue budget. We're in this interesting phase where the building department will be taking in far more revenue than it will spend out for its expenses. And typically, you try to keep those things in balance so that your fees reflect the actual cost of the department. Mm -hmm. But there are clearly some times when you depart from that, when you have a very large building come into a small town, for instance. Right. <clears throat> and you're now starting to talk about six digits or even possibly seven digits worth of revenue in one year for a department that's typically about 200,000. So that large overage is an opportunity to catch up on some things the department needs from the revenues it's generating, not necessarily competing for free cash through the capital process. Um, so exactly how Gene wants to do that, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you want to see it actually come in and then go in November and say no, you can he's do, so far over let's just let him have a truck or as part of the capital article you can do a component of raise and appropriate which would be from the estimated building no. receipts and then and transfer from free cash it would be a dual funding source for the like if the truck was on there for 40,000 and raise and appropriate 40,000 and transfer from free cash the remainder to fund the pay-as-you-go capital. I'd really like to see it kind of on its own out of the operations because then it gets confusing. Okay, so that's what we're Somebody will be able to explain that. <clears throat> but the threshold the, the, for you as a committee is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. If you know that it's not competing for scarce resources, that there's an, another funding source for it, Correct. then the burden of proof is simply, can he make out the case that he needs? Yeah, is it justified? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we did ask them, I don't know if you were in the room, we do were in and out, um, uh, ask them about shared use uh, amongst the parking leases. Uh, absolutely, if it's, um, if the truck's in the parking lot not being used, obviously it would be used for other needs within the town. Yeah, that's the thought. I mean, we have other staff here that do inspections or site visits mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Just so folks understand, it is true that our personnel are indemnified when they use their personal vehicles for town business. 
They are allowed to claim mileage, so it's not free to the town. They are paid. Reimbursing them for mileage in the IRS rate includes more than the fuel. It includes a reasonable maintenance. amount of wear and tear maintenance. So that kind of trickles in, but for someone like Ken who's doing 20, 30 inspections a week, it, it does start to pile up after a while. But insurance-wise, <clears throat> while we're not exposed to the risk, all of the risk, because we're not covering the value of a town vehicle, we are still on the hook for as the secondary insurer of the vehicle. And that has two implications. One is you're asking your employee to take that risk, right? So if you're in an on-town business in your private vehicle and you either get hit or you hit someone, typically your insurer is first and the town's insurance only pays deductibles and anything not covered by your personal insurance on your car. Like the bridge insurance. <clears throat> so you know, asking somebody who drives frequently to take the risk on themselves, you, there are different velocities. My, my personal philosophy is I'm not entirely sure how fair that is, um, depending on the value of your vehicle and how much risk you're exposed to. <clears throat> um, so those are the considerations. And the other is just, are we getting a good return on all of our assets? So I'm very happy to see people using the electric charging stations as two or three different vehicles is one that comes quite often. So we will eventually, when the select board assigns a rate that we charge for the electricity, we'll start to basically pay that off or it'll be a zero expense to the town. My recommendation is gonna be that we charge people what we pay for electricity, which is much, much lower than what you all pay as residents of the town. Yeah. <clears throat> it's about half. Um, there was an article or two in the paper recently, and I do read the newspaper, on electric vehicles. And we've been wondering, you know, how much does it cost when, because whenever my brother-in-law comes to visit, he plugs in his car and our electric bill goes sky high. And, um, so we don't know, in that article, I read both of them, and there was no, no indication of how much it costs to. Yeah, I actually, to be honest, I have a hybrid, I don't have electric, so I don't know what it costs to yeah. charge a battery. My, the information I've seen tends to indicate it's still substantially lower than filling the tank uh, with gasoline, and that may be more and more true as the coming weeks go by. <clears throat> um, but I just want to make sure that that was all funded by the state, mm -hmm. by the Commonwealth. So there's nothing, no expense yeah. to the taxpayer. But I just want to make sure if it's there that we're utilizing it. And for the yeah. taxpayer, it's a good deal. We we pay about after the solar credits come off, you know, about half of what you pay at home for electricity. So it's still a great deal for people to plug in. But, um, <clears throat> the other part of that. We're all going to eventually go in this direction, mm -hmm. except for public safety. The, the jury's still out on whether the smaller vehicles can be converted fully to electric or they're better off hybrid. They're probably going to be better off hybrid. You might be able to use all those old batteries from the radio. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Look <laughs> for <laughs> <laughs> 15 dysfunctional radios in a line. Make them a couple of jump of wires. And a lemon, right? <laughs> yep. And for, to plug in a light bulb. Uh, the 70, so two things. One is they're not eligible for green communities, and this is our other problem. Because we're not replacing a town asset, there is no baseline for green communities competitive grant to compare it. Yeah. Thus, they told us they would not be able to yeah. fund it, um, which was a disappointment to me. So, what the heck so is that the point reference of? I made earlier was. <clears throat> right. And whether or not, I'm sure we get all the rebates, but some of those are tax credits, and we are not really a tax payer mm -hmm. as a municipal government. So I don't know how much of that we can take advantage of. We typically get good pricing because we can get it from statewide contracts, but surveys where all that. Ken and I have only had a very preliminary conversation about you're it. Not, you're not <laughs> nervous about the, uh, well, it's not a first responder or nothing, so I guess it doesn't. Not a huge concern about being the uh, first model year out for full yeah. electric. I was thinking that too. <laughs> that was one of the things yeah. in the article. 
I'm just looking at the timing of the revenue. Yeah. There's no guarantee that three years from now that department will have the same revenue. Yeah. Um, I'm intrigued by the the larger electric vehicles, the, the pickups, yeah. because they do have the some ability. technology has been out long enough now. They've, they've worked out a lot of Technology's it. been out forever. It's not new technology. In World War One, we used to send submarines under the ocean with diesel-powered engines that charge batteries. So it's actually not new at all. But I'm intrigued because <clears throat> there's a certain amount of capacity in a larger battery that can be used. I think it's an exaggeration for Ford to say that you can power your whole house <laughs> off your truck. I, 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 I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. But I still think you could power other smaller items yeah. off the truck. Yeah. <clears throat> the building commissioner does respond 24-7 to structural structure fires yeah. to determine yeah, safety. Yeah. Building uh, certified. Having another vehicle on site that is a town vehicle that has abilities to do more than just be driven to the site is always useful. But that's all I had. Yep. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that, Jim? No, you're good. So we already have our agenda set up for the next one. I don't know who, who's up. I think um, I think it's the fire department. The mm -hmm. town administrator mm -hmm. and Patrice, I believe, is the uh, next one's up. So does next Monday, same time, work for everybody? Work for you, Brandon? Uh, yes, it does. Work for you, too? I'm actually in Mass next week, Monday and Tuesday, at my conference, so. We can let you borrow a tablet if you like. <laughs> well, I'm hoping to pay attention to their instructions. <laughs> <laughs> you, had, you had to list that in the past. Yeah. So if we have nothing else, entertain an adjournment. So I move. move. Second. Uh, Motion made by Shirley, seconded by Mr. Vandenberg. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, do we need a roll call vote since we have one? Yeah, we have one that's. Kelly uh, Tesro, aye. Dick Vandenberg, aye. Ken Pinson, aye. Brandon Osher, aye. Mike Fitzpatrick, aye. Thank you.